The market has been rising strongly since November and there appear to be no clear signs of reversal. I learned a long time ago that the best way to make money as a swing trader is to stop trying to guess the top and just react according to what I see using a strategy and risk management. However, when I see situations like this, I always ask myself, what if it reverses? What if this time is different? Well, I will be very straightforward and uh, analyze a few scenarios with you. So let's go. Welcome to the Finance Hydra channel. My name is Nathan and uh, right here, right now, we see a bearish reaction on the indices today. Uh, it is a bearish reaction, but uh, is this a crystal clear top signal? Is this a dangerous top signal? Well, it is annoying, yes. However, I do like the size of the shadow under the candlestick's body over here on QQQ and uh, on SPY as well. What's the problem? The problem is that we see a bearish candlestick pattern right under a crystal clear resistance level. So when we talk about SPY over here, we see that this could be, this could be, I'm not saying that it is, I'm saying that this could be a possible double top chart pattern, right? Of course, this pattern was not triggered yet. Maybe it never will. I don't know. I don't need to know in order to trade well. All that I know is that we are making a bearish reaction right now. Is the trend bearish? Of course not. The trend is still very bullish. SPY just made a pullback to the 21 MA, the exponential moving average, and uh, it is bouncing nicely from there. Although we are facing a crystal clear resistance level over here, SPY is not gonna turn bearish unless, unless, and this is one of the bearish scenarios I will describe in this video, unless if we actually trigger this double top chart pattern, losing the $466.46 if you want a more specific number. So this support level is our main support level on SPY. Only by losing this support level, we are going to actually trigger a bearish reversal chart pattern on SPY. Now, QQQ, the situation on QQQ is much, much more dramatic, if you ask me. I know we are making a quite decent reaction right now. By the end of the day, this morning, we dropped it very sharply just to retest the 21 MA on the one hour chart over here. Now we are bouncing again. OK, that's cool. All right. But uh, if if QQQ, if we see tech stocks losing this support area over here around three hundred and ninety five, ninety four dollars, this let me let me make this area over here yellow. If we lose this yellow area over here on on uh, on QQQ, then I do believe that we are going to trigger a much sharper correction because because if we analyze if we analyze this chart over here, maybe QQQ is going to make not a double top but a possible bearish pivot point. A bearish pivot point is one of the most famous and the reliable reversal, bearish reversal structure. So by making a crystal clear lower high, lower low, QQQ is going to break the pattern of higher highs, higher lows, right? So by breaking this bullish pattern over here, we are going to actually reverse the mid-term bullish sentiment and that this might probably create, uh, start a sharper correction on the weekly chart over here, because on the weekly chart so far, apparently so far so good. We are doing very well so uh, right now because we are trying to reject last week's candle over here. Last week, we made a very strong and sharp bearish candlestick pattern triggering, triggering this top signal over here. Let me make this uh, red circle. We did trigger a crystal clear top signal on the weekly chart on QQQ precisely when we reach when we hit the all time high from November 2021. That's a very, very dangerous situation for QQQ. However, this week we are trying to reject this bearish thesis over here. But uh, I do agree that if we lose if we lose this yellowish area, if we lose the 395, 394 support level, we are going to completely obliterate any possible bullish reaction, any possible bullish continuation chart pattern. And then we are going to trigger a sharper correction on the weekly chart, possibly to the 21MA, at least 
to the 21 EMA on the weekly chart, which right now is around $380 over here. So that's the most dangerous situation for QQQ. Now, Nathan, could QQQ turn bearish long term speaking? Because so far, we are making higher highs, higher lows since October 2022, right? Yes, you are totally right. We just triggered a bullish flag chart pattern on the weekly chart as well. So tech stocks are still insanely bullish. But uh, if QQQ loses this support level on the daily chart, mid mid term speaking, we are going to reverse the trend. We are not going to reverse the long term trend, but uh, we are going to reverse the trend on the daily chart for sure. Now, in order to actually reverse the long term bullish bias over here, seeing since October 2022, we got to see QQQ losing its main support levels over here, namely the $387, this previous top level, which is in theory a future support level for QQQ if we see a sharper correction and the 21MA on the weekly chart. If we take a look at a few indicators over here, uh, we're going to talk about Tesla in a minute. But uh, if we take a look at a few indicators, we see the 50 period moving average over here, very close to the $387. What a coincidence. We are very close to this key point. If QQQ crashes over here and the loses this red line, we are going to, at the same time, automatically, we're going to lose the 50 period moving average as well. And that this is going to be quite frustrating for the bears. Therefore, this key point over here is very important for QQQ. It is quite annoying to see QQQ making a bullish reaction while the volume is decreasing. This is quite annoying. And if we take a look at other indicators, for instance, RSI, let's take a look at RSI. Uh, we see not necessarily a divergence, but uh, it looks like we are not entirely oversold yet. QQQ could still drop a little bit more in order to reach an oversold area. Of course, this is just a theory. I'm looking at the RSI, which alone is not a reliable indicator. But uh, if you ask me, we could correct a little bit more. I'm not complaining here. I do believe that this reaction is very good and that maybe it is going to create more opportunities. But uh, we could correct a little bit more, maybe to the 21 MA on the weekly chart at least, right? So we still got to keep our eyes open over here. We got to keep our eyes open because any top signal in this area might represent a potential danger for tech stocks. And in this scenario, I don't know what could possibly happen to that. I, I just don't know. Tesla is losing support levels. It's clearly, clearly crashing over here. It is not making clear lower highs, lower lows yet. Maybe, maybe this is one, but it is not that clear to me. We apparently, we are just crashing from a previous top level, which was higher than the previous top level over here. And right now, we are losing the previous support area in one single bearish leg. I'm not going to say that this is atypical for Tesla because Tesla does that often, but uh, it is quite annoying. And this makes the situation a little bit more difficult to analyze over here. If you ask me, if you ask me, there is still time for a reaction, all right? It would be even better to see Tesla making a crystal clear bullish candlestick pattern, breaking the 50 period moving average over here. But uh, this is not what is happening right now. What is happening right now is that Tesla is losing the 50 period. It is losing the 200 period. It is losing the $230 area in one single bearish movement over here. And uh, right now, to me, is Tesla's last chance to react. If we don't see a very meaningful reaction tomorrow, I do believe that Tesla is going to persist the bearish bias over here. And uh, although we don't see lower highs, lower lows yet, I do believe that we could easily seek the 206 support level over here. And uh, you know what's even more problematic for Tesla? Even, even if we see Tesla bouncing over here, as far as I know, we could bounce to the 21MA, we could bounce to a previous support level, I'm so sorry, resistance level, like one of the Fibonacci's retracements over here could be the could be the first one the 50 percent the 61.8 percent i don't know we could see a bounce over here just to see tesla dropping all the way down again this is a real possibility so right now if you ask me i am very skeptical 
about a bullish reversal mid-term speaking i do believe that we can work with short-term bounces over here if we sit as a bounce into the 21 ma to one of the retracements over here that's okay we can trade that but uh a mid-term reversal that's gonna be very very difficult there are many many resistance levels that tesla has to break in order to actually reverse this bearish sentiment over here and uh, this is funny because it is totally the opposite what nvidia is doing right now nvidia looks insanely bullish yes we drop it a little bit today yes we did however we are recovering nicely we are making a new record high over here now you may ask nathan is there any top signal over here no what if we lose today's low tomorrow then okay maybe we're gonna see one maybe i don't know but I, all that i know is that even even if we see a correction even if we see pullback i see nvidia retesting this yellowish area again near the 21 ma on the daily chart and this is it any pullback since it is a bull trend any pullback must be considered just another opportunity to buy at a cheaper price level with a good risk reward ratio so if i see nvidia correcting if i see nvidia dropping over here okay it is gonna be just another buy it is worth buying in situations like this now you may say but what if it goes wrong nathan what if the market actually turns well no big deal you will lose this battle but as long as you know where to place your stop you will survive you will survive for another battle and you could even reverse and uh, sell short in situations like this do what you have to do maybe some of you don't know yet but there is a golden rule for traders never risk more than one percent of your capital one percent never risk more than one percent per trade of course ah but what if the stop loss is too big then enter a small position that does not exceed this one percent combine this with good trades that have a good risk reward ratio and uh, you are one step closer to consistency this way this way you don't even have to be right most of the time in order to be a profitable trader focus and discipline are more important than accuracy now you may say oh but nathan how how dare you are, are you crazy how dare you to say that accuracy is not important i never said that what i said is that accuracy is less important than focus and discipline strategy and risk management are everything here all right and uh, remember if you do want to trade with me if you do want to trade using reliable good trading strategies remember to join our telegram channel there i will always share very very nice trading strategies with you guys always with good risk management always with good risk reward ratio on tesla spy nvidia qqq etc many other stocks that are outside of everybody else's radars so come on just join us over there do you want to hear an example over here this company i recommend it on january 3 over here because break out of a previous resistance level ignition bar this ignition bar was confirmed on january 8 over here and uh, since then it is exploding 25 percent if if you risked one percent of your capital in this trade over here you would be making uh nine percent your swing trading portfolio would be up nine percent just with this trade so this is just another example of good trades we do on stocks that are outside of everybody else's radar so come on join our telegram channel the qr code is right here on the left corner of your screen and consider subscribing this channel to keep you updated on tesla spike qq nvidia etc so subscribe click the like button if you like it this video thank you very much for your audience my dear friends stay safe bye bye